How's it going, guys? Today's video has a special sponsor in Rangers of Oblivion. So right before we get into the video, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what this game offers and why you should try it out. First of all, this is a free to play mobile game on both Android and iPhone. And by you downloading this game in the link in the description below, you directly support my channel. So make sure to show some love in the link down below if you would like to directly support me that way. Rangers of Oblivion is a 3D MMORPG. And from the get go, one of the things I find the best about it is how simple it is to pick up and play. Generally, the games in this genre tend to be very complicated and they kind of push new players away. But I personally had no issues getting started, even though I'm a player with not too much patience and sometimes I don't like to read too much text. The game actually has a very easy way of smoothing you into the gameplay and showing you the robes in a pretty fun manner. Plus, it features my favorite weapon archetype, which is the great sword. I love swinging big swords around. And for me, this has been a lot of fun so far because the great sword archetype is pretty fun in this game. But there's also a wide variety of weapons available. There's magic, bows, and just all kinds of weapons that you can use to mix up your experience and style very well in this game. Plus, the armor in this game is clearly on the cool and fashion side. So you can use that to differentiate yourself from other players and make your character unique. So if you're interested in a mobile game that you can play with your friends and it has lots of content to be explored and played, then this game is definitely for you. Check the link down below to check it out. And with that said, let's go back to the content in this video. How's everyone doing? Zero here. And for today's video, I have a very special story. So it's about the first time and just pretty much the biggest time I met uh, Mr. Masahiro Sakurai, who is, as you all already know and should know, the mastermind behind the Smash Bros. series. So the story begins back to, I want to say, Apex 2015, which was the biggest international tournament at the time for... Uh, Smash 4, Melee, a whole bunch of Smash games, really all of them. One of the biggest prizes for this event was the fact that if you won the doubles competition, right? In Smash 4, you will be awarded a free trip to Japan to participate in a Japanese tournament, a special one that was also sponsored by Nintendo Japan, which I thought was one of the coolest things ever. So me and Mujikin, we decided to team for Smash 4. We played, <laughs> we played double, <laughs> double Diddy Kong. <laughs> This is back when Diddy Kong was, was pretty broken. And we played double pre patch Diddy Kong and it worked out perfectly. We actually fought um, Bo and MJG in the grand finals. After we won though, which the set was very interesting because a lot of crazy stuff happened. We actually won barely. MJG and Bo were really difficult. But the crazy thing that happened was that after we won, we actually found out that it was for first place and second place. So. So we were fine either way because all I wanted to have was the opportunity to participate in this tournament and have the free trip because it was an all paid opportunity trip to go to Japan, participate in an event, get to know Nintendo Japan people. And I was like, this is an incredible opportunity that even if you have the money, you can't really replicate. So we won the tournament. I won singles. We won doubles. I, we won the trip opportunity. And then we went to Japan. Because at the time I lived in Arizona with Mitsu King. We were pretty stoked about it. And it was like a, what, like a 10, 11 hour flight. It was really, really long. So when we got to Japan, we got picked up. We, we traveled to Tokyo. We got picked up by a representative. I, I actually forget if it was a representative of Nintendo Japan, an employer from Nintendo Japan, or if it was someone that was working on the project. But they were telling us a lot of details about a whole bunch of stuff. They were telling us like how how Nintendo like looks at the US tournaments and stuff like that. I remember they told us some interesting details that they watch the tournaments and they, they pay attention to them uh, here and there as well. Obviously, it's not everything, but they do pay attention to the events and whatnot. And I was like really excited about it. I was like, oh, this is super cool. He told me that if uh, they saw the statistics of for glory at the time for win loss ratio. And I, I remember I said something on the lines. I was like, so so Diddy Kong has like a like a great win rate, right? And I remember he told me something on the lines of like, he was like, you'd be surprised who has the most win rate on for glory. He said it was like, like pretty random. Apparently, like the stats are not really what you might think they are. Uh, I remember he told me that Luigi was really good in for glory. Uh, apparently on the statistics back then. And I was like, that sounded really weird to me. This is back in the time when like Diddy Kong was like reigning supreme in competitive play. So it was really, really weird. Regardless, though, we made our way through Tokyo. And we were staying at a pretty fancy hotel. In fact, it was one of the fanciest hotels I have ever seen in Japan. It was it was a humongous tower. Um, it was near the beach and they had like 24. I think it was 24 hour meal service. You could just call them and they will give you food. They had wonderful food. They had like all these like pretty much butlers just, just paying attention to you. 
um in case you needed anything it was it was kind of crazy actually it, it, was, it was really really fancy place i remember that foe actually couldn't come anymore because he couldn't find his passport and he couldn't get it in time so we had to get someone from international and we ended up getting Sive, who i believe is german if i'm not mistaken i might be wrong here but i he's he's from europe that's for sure i'm just not sure if he's actually german but that's what i remember it was mjg Sive, and it was me and music again so cool they spoke to us and then i remember they told me something along the lines of like all right we're gonna have to discuss the rules of the tournament with you guys and then i was expecting like a because i they didn't tell us many details but apparently it was like an invitational eight person man tournament i think we had like four internationals and four japanese players i believe it was and then we also we had a singles tournament and a doubles tournament which was uh single elimination two out of three and then they had items on both singles and doubles and i was like what i was very surprised because i was like i was expecting like a serious tournament so i remember we were in a diner with all the japanese executives and then i was just like hey i think the tournament should be without items <laughs> <laughs> and then they looked at me and then the guy was like you want me to tell them that and i was like um if you want to and then he like told them about it and then they're like they looked at me they paused for like three seconds and then they said like one two things and then they were like no <laughs> no apparently they had a reason though it was because they had a bigger reason than that but it was like it was like pretty complicated to explain but whatever obviously i wasn't expecting them to change it but i was like hey can we just play with no items <laughs> It was just, we just not. <laughs> Regardless, though, uh, we went to the tournament. I won the singles event. We won doubles with me chicken barely. It was a pretty hard win, actually. And because the Japanese players had like these like random gimmicks, and they were like hella prepared to uh, for the tournament. They had like these like special strategies with like Ness and Mewtwo and just some weird stuff. Because it was like doubles with items and friendly fire off. So it was like a pretty weird meta, really strange meta. We were fighting these two Japanese players in the grand finals and they were using, I believe they were using a strategy that was Ness and Mewtwo. And they were using Mewtwo because Mewtwo could uh, charge uh, the Shadow Ball through, the uh, through his teammate and then it will be really difficult to deal with. And if they return and if we use the character to return it, then they will observe it with Ness. Um, and they could also, you know, absorb items and projectiles and a whole bunch of stuff and deflect stuff. So they were running like this, like deflect absorb composition team, which was like really annoying to deal with because like all the items we were using were not working, but they were using items against us pretty heavily. In fact, I remember the first item that they got was the, the blowing wind item that the, the huge thingy, like the one that's super strong and it actually killed both Mutikin and I at zero. And we were like hella scared because we were like, dude, this might be, it might be over. Um, fortunately though, we managed to slightly come back and we actually won game three last hit. I think I grabbed a smash full by the very end. Um, cause I was playing Diddy Kong and then Mutigan was playing a wide variety of characters. First he was playing like, I want to say it was Captain Falcon. Then he was playing Rosalina. This is all, oh, this is, this part kills me. So he was playing Rosalina, but it was game three. We were gearing up for game three. And then we were losing to a specific item and strategy they were using. And I was like, yo, what can we do about this? And Jason was just like, Hey, we should just. I should just go Rosalina and then we can absorb these items and then I can use them against them. And I was like, okay. So Jason's, keep in mind, Mewtwo doesn't really play Rosalina like that. So it was a pretty ballsy pick in a single elimination tournament in grand finals, nonetheless, to go Rosalina for the last game. But Jason had some, you know, some strategy with that. So anyway, he went Rosalina and then the strategy worked perfectly and we dominated that game with, with Rosalina's down B, which is hilarious. Um, all Jason did was just kind of camp, and then I just kind of just approached with banana and, and broken Diddy. <laughs> we, just, we just went from there. It worked out really well. I was really surprised. Uh, we win the tournament, and they gave me these really cool... I forget if they're like kimonos or a robe or something like that, but it was like it was something special for the winner. They're like they were like Nintendo and Smash Bros. themed. They're pretty special. I still keep... Because I got two of them for winning singles and doubles. So I still keep them in my, uh, my closet. Very special, very special to me. And they also gave me a Smash Team 3DS, very special as well that I also keep. Regardless, these were really cool prizes that I pretty much keep as like trophies, you know, or mementos of like my memories of coming to Japan. But here's the coolest thing is that as soon as we won the tournament, we had a translator come up to us and they were like, "Hey, uh, Mr. Masahiro Sakurai is actually at the venue and he's been watching the whole tournament. He." You know, you guys have an opportunity to talk to him and, and meet him. And I was like, what? I was like, we can meet him and talk to him. He was like, she was like, yeah, yeah, you, you guys can talk to him and meet him. I'll be your translator. 
I was like, there's no way we'll get we'll get a chance to finally meet this man. When we finally had the chance to meet Mr. Uh, Master Hirzaker, we went to the back, which was pretty, I would say, the back was like full of like, like, I want to say like Nintendo employees. And then it was like Mr. Master Hirozakura. He came from like, I don't, he came from like the back and then he like said hi to us. And then this is, this is something that I think is really funny. Keep in mind though, it's because of the way translations work. Um, as soon as we got to talk to him, this is the first thing. Because I was, I was saying something along the lines of, I was like, hey, how you doing? That's what, like, like normal greetings when you meet like someone for the first time. And then the first thing we get back from the translator was like, hi, nice to meet you. Uh, please make sure not to ask me anything about character development or character balance. <laughs> I started laughing. It was, it was funny. But I knew for a fact that like if Mr. Uh, if Mr. Sakurai were to meet like, like competitive players, they'll probably like ask him to like nerf characters or both characters, you know, that can get pretty annoying because like, you know, you don't really want to have that conversation with players like that, you know, you need like maybe some sort of feedback or something like that. But like, you know, it can get pretty annoying. So I get it. But it was pretty funny that he said that for, like, as a disclaimer immediately. Then um, we, I was just we, I, we were just like talking about stuff. I was just telling him about like through, through the translator. I was like, I was like, Smash Bros changed my life. You know, I travel all around the world. First time coming to Japan. Thanks to Smash. You know, it's an honor that I get to play your games that you put so much time into. I'm really happy that, you know, you you made the series. You made a lot of people happy and you gave a lot of us purpose that we didn't really previously had. And we really enjoy your games and we're going to keep playing them. And I'm just really happy that, you know, the project the smash is successful and you know all the passion that you put in this project and you know it means a lot for a lot of us you know i was kind of like telling stories and comments like along those lines and you know i was telling him a little bit about, about tournaments and things like that like i have a long history of like competing in tournaments and it's all thanks to you yada 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 he was like really excited about it like he was like smiling and he was like oh that's amazing i'm happy that you guys get to do this and whatnot and then like um this is one of my favorite parts is that we actually got to um, got him to sign some things. So he signed my controller. Because back in the day, I had a very special controller. It was like my good luck controller. And then I had him sign this controller for me. And when he signed this controller, uh, he drew like a... I was expecting him to sign, maybe sign like his name or something like that. But he actually just signed... He like drew a Kirby on my controller, which was like the Mr. Sakurai signature or something, which I thought was crazy cool. He just basically drew a little Kirby on it and it was like in a golden pen and everything and i saved that controller for forever and funny part is that that controller that he signed with the curvy thingy actually ended up being the controller that i used to win 56 tournaments in a row like my whole streak the everything that happened with that streak and everything all happened because it was all happening around the time where he signed this controller but after he signed it i went on and won like the rest of the 30 tournaments or something like that so in a way you could say that mr Mr. Sakurai's blessing <laughs> helped me in tournament. All things considered, though, it was a really interesting experience to get to meet Mr. Sakurai. I believe not many people at all even have a chance to talk to him or like through a translator or anything like that, because Mr. Sakurai usually stays like in the shadows at these events and things like that. Like when he goes to like these kind of events that I've gone to for Smash and Nintendo, usually Mr. Sakurai stays behind like behind the scenes and he'll have like a couple bodyguards and then like you're not really supposed to like disturb him or anything like that. You know because he's busy and whatnot but it was really cool that that was like probably the only chance i'll have to like you know talk to him via translator and something like that like a conversation and it was like a 10 15 minute conversation so it was pretty cool that we actually got to like interact with him in that way pretty unique opportunity i say all things considered <laughs> because we won that tournament and we got so much to so much out of it you know going to japan for free getting to meet sakura and all that it's amazing really amazing actually so i'm really thankful for them and that's pretty much just what happened so i hope you guys enjoyed the story video let me know if it was interesting like, drop me a comment drop a like if you had a good time and i'll see you guys around in the next video thank you so much for watching as always make sure to subscribe hit the bell and i'll see you guys around once again thank you so much rangers of oblivion for sponsoring today's video as a final note in terms of features the game offers quite a bit so for example in terms of freedom in the combat you have 360 degree movement while fighting and also very smooth camera controls Generally, mobile games, unfortunately, are very hard to control, especially when you play more complex games like this. But they actually did a very good job with this game, especially with the UI. And overall, the experience feels very smooth and it's very easy to move around, control the camera and pretty much keep all your abilities in check with the way they designed this game. They, pretty much the buttons are at the right spots and it makes it much easier to just fight the enemies instead of fight the controls, if that makes sense. There's also a lot of areas to explore. 
that have a wide range of monsters to defeat, which is great variety for your experience. So you're not always going to be fighting the same enemies in the same looking areas. The game has a lot of variety and it's going to keep you entertained for a while. The game also rewards you for the time that you invest into it. You can forge weapons directly from the loot you collect from exploring and slaying enemies, which rewards you for exploring and taking your time. And you can play this game with your friends or strangers to form a team and tackle missions together, which makes this a great bonding experience with your homies. Or, you know, you can also make this game a social experience with other people. Bottom line, there's a lot of different ways you can enjoy Rangers of Oblivion. Once again, the link is in the description below. Go check it out, and I hope that you enjoyed this game. This directly supports my channel, so I appreciate you guys very much for your time. Make sure you guys to subscribe so you can keep up with my daily uploads, and I'll see you guys around in another video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.